Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland, of course, speaking earlier in the House of Commons, beginning the push of a new NAFTA agreement mm. toward the finish line. Frank McKenna is a former Canadian ambassador to the U.S. and deputy chair of TD Bank. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you've seen a lot of this from all sides, in government, outside of government. I, we've talked before about this, but I'm just here we are. First of all, do you have any concerns about how this gets pushed across into ratification, or do you think this is a fairly easy path through Parliament? Yeah, I have no concerns. Um, remember, I've got a history here starting back in 1987. Yes. And, uh, and then it was a big uphill struggle. Uh, but this matter is largely litigated in the country. And that election, of course, uh, in 1988, pretty well decided where the country was. And subsequently, there's been as close as you can get to consensus on, uh, on free trade within the country. So uh, I think it's largely been litigated. And uh, I think you can almost put a fork in it. This is going to get through the House. And uh, it will be ratified. Interesting. We had, uh, <clears throat> even then, uh, that. And in, in subsequent elections, debates around how free uh, NAFTA obviously itself was a big question. We got there. To, I think everybody, uh, of course, North America, around the world, we, the, the free trade notion was sort of alive and well. Protectionism is back with us. Yes. Our major trading partner, the one that carries all of the clout in these negotiations, had a protectionist bent. How much has that changed the way we need to be thinking about this? In other words, should we stay open even in the face of, of more closed partners? It's still to our advantage to be free traders. I think this is a great question that we're not really discussing much in the country. Uh, this is not really a free trade deal we have with Mexico and the United States. It's a managed trade deal. Right. And unfortunately, they've already undercut it. Uh, they've done their first phase of their deal with China. And in that, they've basically gone bilateral and said, China, you've got to buy, let's say, $100 billion worth of agricultural goods from us. That's a product that would have come from Canada. In, in, in part, right. in other countries. So we're already undercut within the, uh, the arrangement. Um, so I think there's absolutely no doubt we're in quite a perilous position. It's a great achievement to get this agreement, but we live in a world now, a protectionist world, and I think we're going to have to do things to protect ourselves in that world, or else we're going to be, or, or else we're going to be all by ourselves. There was something else in this deal that um, didn't really find the criticism mm -hmm. that you, I think, it might have. For some reason, it was muted, and that is there is this weird clause in here that we are actually beholden on any future trade deals to check with the U.S. The U.S. can scrap this whole deal if they don't like our new trading partners. China would be, I think, front and center on the list of potential bilaterals for us that the U.S. might thwart. How big a concern is that? Well, I think it's a legitimate concern. In fact, we call it the China Clause that was inserted in the last, at the last minute. Right. It's almost like a poison pill clause. But then the United States turns around and does a deal with China that effectively hurts the trading partners of the United States. So there's nothing fair about this. Mm -hmm. The United States is not a reliable partner at present. And it's using its bully uh, ability uh, in order to push around everybody that it does business with. And I think that means that we have got to have a, as many other friends as we can, which means the, uh, the Asian partners that we have or Europe under the CEDAR agreement and even more so that we're part of large trade blocks within the world. And we should have free trade within Canada uh, as well and yes. do everything that we can in order to uh, in order to prepare for the fact we've got a couple of unreliable partners right now. We've talked for many years about uh, freeing trade up across provincial borders. Mm -hmm. We've also talked about the need for, for Canadians to get really serious about diversifying our trade. We got a little lazy, right? It was easy to go north-south even when there were <clears> friction <throat> points, still easier than anything else. Is, are we awake yet or are we now going to kind of do this less than perfect deal with our our easy trading partner instead of looking for really good deals elsewhere? Uh, we're not awake. Um, over 50 years ago, uh, Pierre Trudeau, Prime Minister at the time, and the father of our current Prime Minister, said that we're too reliant on the United States. Uh, and he was right. Mm -hmm. And we were subject to some tariffs then, and he was right. We are more reliant today than we were then. And at that time, he made a commitment, subsequent governments did, that we would become more diversified. We have not. We continue to take the easy road. And even though we signed a free trade agreement with Europe, the early evidence is they're taking more advantage of it than we are. Uh, so as a country, we've got to really sharpen our tools and understand that we just can't rely on this single partner. We've only got 45 seconds here, but what can governments do to help wake people up? If our own self-interest and our entrepreneurial spirit, which is it looms large, isn't enough to get us out there, what should we be doing differently? 
Well, I, I do think that we have to take on the internal challenge for trade within the country and a regulatory challenge as well. We need to be the best equipped country in the world fiscally and economically to compete and then we can overcome other barriers. But I also think that we need to give tools to our, our industry, um, whether it be through trade missions or, uh, or foreign trade expertise, in order to try to move them increasingly towards, uh, towards the planet rather than the, uh, the North American market only. We're going to join our American audience shortly, and you will stay with us for that. Yes. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, Frank McKenna, of course, among many other things, former Canadian ambassador to the U.S., currently deputy chair of TD Bank.